just what the Bible says. He's coming on a cloud, every eye shall see him. Glory, hallelujah, he's coming again so soon. Have you heard about Jesus? Jesus is coming again. Have you heard about Jesus? Jesus is coming again. Have you heard about Jesus? Jesus is coming again. Oh, coming on a cloud of your eyes to see him. Glory, hallelujah, he's coming again. Thank you, Father, in the name of the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. We thank God for being here on another um, uh, uh, Friday morning. Amen, Friday morning for Morning Manor. We thank God for the prayer on today. We thank God for those who are watching on today, that you're able to be with us on today here at the First Church of God in Christ, where everybody is somebody. And whenever you're with us, whether you're here in the building or you're with us online, stream, on live stream, however, you with family on this morning. We are family. We're in the Christian family. And it's all because of what Jesus has done for us to make us family. We're adopted in this Roy family. We're a chosen generation. Oh, we're a royal priesthood. We called out of darkness into this marvelous, marvelous light. And we thank God for being here on this morning. We're going directly in God's word on this morning. We've been in the series, The Power of Waiting on God. And I've been enjoying this series. I've been enjoying the Lord renewing me and letting me know that there's power in waiting on God. And those who have been listening to us and keeping up with us, and we've had others speak on it also, and we've enjoyed each speaker that has spoke on this. And no matter how many times we talk on it, it's always something that comes out of God's word. And there's power in waiting on God. And as I've shared before, um, when I was a young teenager, God gave this to me. And it's one of my favorite scriptures. And I was thinking of all the times in my life. I can't remember everything, but there's been so many times in my life that I've been waiting on God for particular things. And he's always came through in his time. Say in his time. Not my time, but his time. And if you wait on God, you will find power in that. Um, we're going to our key uh, verse, and then we're just going to see which way the Lord is going to take us. We're going to do a little reviewing of the things that we've already heard. The Bible tells us not to allow the things, uh, the word of God, to slip when it comes. So many times we hear the word, and we'll say, oh, I enjoyed the word today. Oh, the Lord uh, really blessed the preacher or the teacher or whoever brought the word. And sometime after it's over with, we forget it. But we want, to re we want to always remember God's word. And there's times we do forget God's word. And that's why we have the Holy Ghost. The Bible says that the Holy Ghost will bring it back to our remembrance. But we want to make sure that we don't allow it to slip. We want to make sure that we're listening to what God is saying because we need his word. So sometimes it has to be reviewed. We have to go over it. We have to repeat it over and over. And what happens when you do that, it gets in your spirit. When I was uh, growing up in the church, the pastor I was under at that time was Elder John Barry, and he did a lot of reviewing. He did a lot of repeating. He went over scriptures over and over. You go back to church, you go back over it again, and you go back the next time, you go over again. And there was many times, I must be honest, as a young saint, there was times I thought, oh, Lord, give us something else. But don't, I didn't dare say that to him. I didn't dare say that. I just sit there. But now I'm glad that he repeated it, amen, because that word is in me to this day, and that word has helped carry me and brought me through many challenges in life, so it, it pays to listen to God's word. Whoever's speaking, sometimes we have certain choice ones we like to hear, and that's okay, but whoever's speaking, make yourself listen, because it's not them that's speaking, it's God that's speaking through them. The power of waiting on God, our key verses, Isaiah 40, 31, and it said, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. We thank God for the word of God. God's word helps us to appreciate the things we have. It helps us to walk in, in, in the spirit of gratefulness. We know that delay does not mean deny. I keep on saying that because we have to remember that when we're going through 
Because it's delayed don't mean that God is not going to do it. Just keep on waiting on God in expectation that he's going to do that that you have asked him to do. Knowing that God has a plan for us. Plans are good and not evil. Ella Welch brought something to us on, on the other week. And as I said, God's word is, I don't care how many times you look at it, it's always something in it that may be missed. It said, has thou not known, has thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, faint or not? At the end, he dealt with that end. And he kept on dealing with the end. God knows the end. And I was thinking on last night, the earth, how big it is. I don't know the measurements of it. Do you? Do you know the ends of it? And as I, I kept on hearing it, and when he said it, it did something, for, it, I mean, something leaped in me. The end. So I was laying in the bed later, not last night, a few weeks ago, after he brought the word, or a week ago when he brought the word, it was last week. And I thought, oh, he knows our expected end. God knows the end, this just coming right now, of everything. He knows the beginning, and he knows the end. Why is that? I'm getting happy. I feel something leaping in me. He said, I'm the alpha and the omega. I'm the beginning and was even before the beginning. And I'm the end even after that. I'm yet am. So God knows the end. So therefore, if he knows the end of the earth, that was encouraging to me, Ella Wells. He knows the end of the earth. He knows the, my expected end. But the Bible says he knows the plans he has for us. Plans are good and not evil. Listen to this. And he knows our expected end. Therefore, we should trust in him because we can't see where we're going. We don't know the end, but he does. But we do know the older saints who say, I know what's waiting at the end for me. Why? Because the Bible has told us eternal life is waiting for us. There's a song we used to sing, believe I run on. See what the end is going to be. Believe I run on. See what the end is going to be. Believe I run on. See what the end is going to be. Something at the end is waiting on me. What's waiting on me? Eternal life that he has promised us. But as we're walking this journey, as we're running this journey, as we walk, as we're going on this journey, God knows how to get us to that, to the end of what he already has promised us, it's already promised, but it's a journey, and we have to journey to that. We have to lay hold. Eternal life is ours, but we have to lay hold to it, and the enemy would like to take it from us. But the Bible says we're sealed until the day of redemption. Only one that can let go of what God has given you is you. So the enemy comes to try to distract you from the promises that God has promised you and the, 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 the ultimate goal and promise is eternal life. To ever be with the Lord, to be in heaven where there's no more crying, no more sadness, no more sorrow, no more death, no more of the things and interruptions that we have here in life, no more of that. But to get there, you have to allow God to lead you and guide you and direct you because only he knows the way through the wilderness. And it's a wilderness getting there, but if you go through with him, he knows the way because he's already been there. So the best thing to do is, get to, is to be embraced with him, for he knows our expected end. Thank you, Ella Welch, for sharing that with us. God knows all things. And I was thinking, this is something that we need to remember on this morning. Even the strongest people get tired and weary. Sometimes, but God's power and strength never is diminished. Never. All of us get tired sometimes. All of us get weary sometimes. But God's power do not diminish. God's power is always there. We have to rely and depend on his power. It says he, God is never too tired or too busy to help and to listen to us. The Bible says he hears our cry. And Elder Scotty, I found a scripture in the Bible that said even our tears, Sister Saida, so glad to see you this morning. We missed you. The Bible says our tears, he has them in a bottle. That means God knows our tears. That means he's concerned about our tears. Yes, I'm a man, and there's some time I cry. 
I try not to cry in front of people. I try not to cry in front of my wife. Sometimes she caught me. The tears are just a rolling. Amen. But God knows about those tears. And because you cry don't mean that you're weak. It means you have some feelings. The Bible says even Jesus wept. So if Jesus wept, we know we're going to. And why was he crying? He was crying because others were crying. He felt what they were feeling. So that's what that scripture means, that he has our tears. It, it, it's saying that God understands your tears, and he cares about your tears, and he hears your crying. So even though sometimes when we're praying and we're seeking God, we feel like, if we be honest, that God don't hear us. But that's why the word of God tells us that he hears us, because he don't want us to be deceived. He wants us to know that I'm concerned about you. And he said, casting all your cares upon him, for he careth for you. So the Saeed, Saeed, I wasn't going to share this at this time, but a few weeks ago I was riding my bike, and it was on a Sunday morning before we come to church. And I was just out riding my bike, and I was fine. I was happy. Everything was all right. And Sister Saeed, all at once, uh, uh, seemed like uh, uh, my stomach all at once got real nervous for no reason. And I felt it. I, would, I, I didn't want to share everything. I felt it. I thought, what is this? And I, all, all it was, I felt anxiety. But I didn't, you don't always speak everything that you feel. If no one's there, who's going to hear it? The devil's there, and he hears. So I felt all this anxiety. And in my spirit, I thought, what is this? And usually if I, if I feel a little anxiety, if I ride my bike or if I run or if I exercise or whatever, it, 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 it causes it to, you know, to go. But I'm already riding my bike, everything's fine, and then only once I just feel this anxiety. And so when I felt it, that's why it's good to know God's word. That's why it's good to have the baptism of the Holy Ghost and just let the Lord have that overflow in you. But he said, if you believe on me as the scripture has said, out of your belly, out of your innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. So the rivers began to flow in the Holy Ghost, even though I was feeling the anxiety, but I didn't speak it. And even though I was feeling the Spirit of the Lord began to roll up in me, and he said, casting all your cares upon me, for I carry for you. So when the Lord said that, he, then he said after he said that, after I felt that, heard that, he said, now throw your cares to me. Those at First Church know that many times we have demonstrated here at the church, and God has told you all, and I and I share with you the Lord said to throw, to throw it. In other words, to release it, to let it go. So I'm riding my bike, one hand's on the handle, the other hand was like this, and I begin to throw those cares, whatever the anxiety was, I begin to throw it. And each time I threw it, I felt it coming out of me. I felt it coming out of me. Sister Saeed, I went, I was in a church parking lot, and I do, I, I do some things that don't make sense to people. But I was going around the parking lot a certain amount of times that I do sometimes. And uh, so I was doing that. And I, I, so I finished going around my, my times that I go around, and I was getting ready to go exit out. And as I exit out, I was going around the church, not all the way around the church, and as I was going around to turn the corner, the billboard of the church said on it, it said, casting all your cares upon him, for he careth for you. Before I could hardly make the turn, and by the time I got around with the billboard, I said, Lord, look at you. He confirmed it. So God is saying, wait on me, cast all your, as you waited on me to do this, as you waited for me to, to bless you, as you waited on whatever you waited on me to do, cast your cares upon me, for I care for you. We believe in God to lift this com uh, coronavirus. We believe in God to do great and mighty things. And you know what? God is doing great things in the midst of this. He said he would do it. Didn't he tell his first church? He said he would make waves in the wilderness and rivers in the, li rivers in the desert. He's doing it, Sister Saida. He's doing it. He's doing it for you. He's doing it for me. And he's doing it for whoever will let him do it. Let me give you some good news this morning. There's a, a mother that goes over to Bethany. And she's not able to go to church now. I won't call her name. 
and she's in assisted living now, and she doing, oh, I'm going to tell her, she, 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 she been going through some things, all right? So she's in assisted living, and she contact the coronavirus. So I asked her son who goes there the other day, I asked him, I said, how's your mother doing? And he said, mom had, mom uh, had coronavirus. Uh, yeah. And so when he said coronavirus or COVID-19, as soon as he said, I went, oh, because I love her so much. We know it can happen to anybody, but there are some people you feel like it shouldn't happen to this. It can't happen to this person. It can't happen to this person. Oh, she's such a sweet woman. And she's up in age. So when, so when he said mom had coronavirus, he said had, but I didn't catch that. All I heard was coronavirus. And I said, oh, because I'm thinking of her age. I'm thinking of, oh, oh. He said, oh, oh, no. Mom's fine. She doesn't recover from it. 98 years old. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. He's saying she's doing fine. Ain't the mom doing fine. She's in uh, assisted living. He's saying she's in one of the best places they take good care of. But she has recovered. Did you hear me? She has recovered at 90 some years old, almost 100 years old, and she has recovered. Why did I get so excited? Because they said older people are the ones, I mean, everybody, anyone can get it, but they, it's easier for them to get it. And they don't usually recover, but she recovered at 98 years old and doing fine. That let me know that God can do anything but fail. So God is a healer. God is a deliverer. God is everything he's always been. Y'all hear me say, Lord, move like you did in days of old. He's doing it. The same thing he did in yesteryear, he's doing it now. I'm one of those who are always talking about God did this, God did that. He is the same God, and he said, I change it not. I'm looking at Brother Taiwan this morning. He's still the God in the courtroom. We won't go there. He's the God in the courtroom. I've seen God work in the courtroom. I've seen him do it before, but he did it. He went to another level this time. God went to another level this time. Hallelujah. Praise and magnify the name of the Lord. God canceled $8,500. God did it. Yeah. Hallelujah. But it was something that Brother Taiwan had to do. And one day I want him to go down the, the line of what he had to do in waiting on God. He had to believe God. He had to hold on to God when he felt like things wasn't working out. When job after job, he get jobs and they was they tell him I'm going to hire you. And then a few weeks later, they're letting him go. But he yet held on to God. I won't tell all of his testimony. I'll let him tell it. But I've seen this young man wait on God. I've seen him hold on to God when it was nothing but a string to hold on to. But it paid off. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. He said, I want, to, I, want it, I want the debt paid off. And he was believing. And they knocked most of it out. And I was just happy they knocked most of it out. And Taiwan said, but I want it all. I'm believing God to knock it all out. We went before God knocked out most of all of it, and I thought, well, that's good right there. But God knocked it all out. He let him know that when you wait on me, there's power in waiting on God. There's, he said, I will increase your strength when you feel like you have no strength. You wait on me, and I will give you strength. I will renew your strength so you can continue. You think I'm going to give it to you today? No, you still got to wait. You've been waiting for a little while, but the waiting has paid off. It's a blessing. There's power in waiting on God. God knew his end in that particular area. And God brought that to an end. Now, there's some other areas that he's going to have to trust God. But that is over. Now, all you got to do, Brother Tower, is maintain your blessing. Hold on to what God has done for you. He said, the same way you waited on me for that, you're going to have to wait on me for something else. But use the same strategy, believe me, stand on my word, prepare yourself for the things you believe in God for, be consistent in what you're doing, don't give up in well-doing, and I'll do it again. Amen. Say amen. God will do exactly what he says. Lamentation 325, 26 says, the Lord is good to those who hope in him, to the one who seek him. It is good to wait quietly upon the Lord. So we have to wait on the Lord. God don't diminish 
even though it may seem like things are not working out, trust in God. He is never too tired or too busy to help us. His strength is our source of strength. His strength is our source. His strength is our source of strength. Exchange your strength, which is weak, for God's strength, which is strong. When you feel all of life is crushing you and you cannot go another step, Remember that you can call upon God and he will renew your strength. Trust in the Lord is, is the patient expectation that God will fulfill his promise in his word. He will strengthen us to rise above life difficulties. We're going to have life difficulties, but God will give us the strength to, go, to, to rise above them. God loves you and he wants the best for you. Please remember Philippians 1 and 6, and what do it say? Being confident. <laughs> Y'all know that's another favorite of mine. Being confident of this very thing, that he which has begun a good work in you, he will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Woo! Whatever he started, he will finish it, he will complete it, and he will bring it to pass. You have to say that. Will you say that with me? God will finish it. Come on. God will finish it. Those who listen on, on life says God will finish it. God will complete it. And God will bring it to pass. You have to tell yourself that. You have to encourage yourself. Lord, I'm confident in you. I'm resting in you. I'm relaxing in you. Knowing that you're going to do what I ask. And he said he's doing it from this day until the day of redemption. And he'll do that. And then there'll be something else you need him to do. But whatever it is you need him to do, know that God is working in you. And he's going to be working in you from now until Jesus comes. He's going to always be working something out in you because there's always something that's coming up that you need God to work it out. That's why we sing a song at this church that used to be like one of our number one hits. Jesus will work it out. The same way he worked it out for Abraham, he'll work it out for you. They couldn't have no children, but did they finally have one? Answer, did they finally have one? Did they have to wait? They waited, but God brought them out. Joseph was put in prison. He didn't do nothing wrong. Did he have to wait? He had to wait. He was promised, I'm going to remember you, and they forgot him, but he kept on waiting. He was, uh, 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 his master's wife, she lied up on him, and he had to go back to prison, but he still waited on God. He waited on God from 16. I think he was 16 when he went in. He was 40 when he came to his promise. Think about it. How, can you wait that long? 16 to 40. But when his promise came, he never, there was nothing to look back to. When his promise came, he walked in his promise. And from that time on, on it was just up, 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 up. But he waited on God. So be confident. Remember that whatever God started, he will complete it. He will bring it to pass. Now go back to Lamentation. Says, Lamentation 3, 25 through 26 says, The Lord is good to those whose hope is in him. To the one who seek him, it is good to quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. This waiting is quietly waiting. Sometimes when we wait, we verbally wait. And we speak it. And we walk in it. There's other times we believe God the same, we trust God the same, we rely upon God, but we don't necessarily say so much. We just quietly wait on him, having the assurance and the confidence that God is going to do what he asks. Now, everyone uh, is made up different. I do better, Sister Echo, sometimes I know you may not understand me, I do better quietly waiting on God. Not always verbally saying. When I want something, many times I'm asking God to do something. There's times I'm verbal. But there's other times I, I speak it in my spirit. And God will begin to give me a strategy concerning what I'm waiting on. And he, and, and, and he put it in my spirit, just do it. Don't, don't, don't necessarily say so much, just do it. Just quietly wait on me. And as I quietly wait on God, and as I, as I follow the strategy that he has given me, I begin to see God begin to work it out. Even this morning, something happened. That's why I hollered when I came in the church. Because it's something, 
some things I got before the Lord, some physical things I have before the Lord. And God is doing some things. But I'm quietly waiting on him, and I'm seeing him do it step by step. Sometimes God does it. We can't always say why God is telling us to be quiet about it. Sometimes God don't want us to tell no one else. And sometimes God, the enemy, the devil, don't know everything. So sometimes God is giving you a strategy or God is telling you certain things. He don't want the enemy to know. See, you have a personal relationship with God, and the devil do not know all things. God knows all things, but the devil don't know. And some things that you're feeling, some things you're going through, the devil won't know unless you say it. He don't know all your thoughts. He don't know sometimes you feel like giving up. But then when you speak it, I feel like giving up. Then he knows where you're at. You, he, 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 he locates you. You don't tell him where you're at. But you may feel that, but you say it within yourself, Lord, give me endurance. That may be your prayer. Lord, give me endurance. And as you quietly wait on God, God begins to give you that endurance and show you how to endure, show you how to have patience, show you how to wait, and you don't share that strategy with no one. You just walk it out. Confident in knowing the voice of God, knowing that God has spoken to you, knowing that God has told you, Yours may be in concerning your ministry, and you're concerning which way to go. And you say, I mean, the Lord told me this. When he, did, he told me to do this, told me to do this. Don't tell me. If, if the Lord gave that to you, that's for you. And he'll let you know when to be quiet. He'll speak in your spirit and say, don't share right now. And you won't understand why the Lord is saying, don't share. Or he'll say, don't speak right now. Why, Lord, why can't I speak? Don't speak right now. Because he wants to show you and walk you through it. He wants to give you the ABCs. He wants to give you that foundation. He wants to give you that solid, uh, he wants to establish you. And he can't do that when you're gabbing and telling everybody what he's doing. Just let him do it. And God will do great and mighty things. You never tell the enemy where you're at. You never tell the enemy, even when, when, when you're in a, uh, in a fight or you're in war, they don't tell the enemy what, where their secret places are. They don't tell the enemy certain things because if they know what will happen, they'll know where they're at. They know where to locate them. They don't tell that. They know, and the ones who need to know, they know, but they keep that to themselves. And Brother Don, prove what you're saying. Prove it by Scripture. The Bible says he will give his secrets to the saints. If it's a secret, is it supposed to be told? No. Not until God said, tell me. So I'm quietly waiting on God to do what he said he's going to do and give me the strategy how to do what he's telling me to do. Then when he does it, I can tell it. And then when I tell him, listen to this, when I tell it, my light will confirm what I'm telling. Then it will be more effective and people will believe it because my words match what I'm saying. So let's quietly wait on the salvation and the deliverance of the Lord. Waiting on God quietly is knowing, listen to this, we're going to bring it to a close. Waiting on God is quietly knowing and having the confidence that God is going to do what you ask him to do. Therefore, you pursue it. You go after it, what you're waiting for. You prepare yourself, say prepare yourself. Why are you waiting? This is what you do. You prepare yourself. That's what Taiwan did. He prepared himself. He had everything he needed right there, and the judge, all he had to do, all the judge had to do was read it. Then what the judge read, his conduct matched it. See, because if your conduct don't match it, then God has someone there that don't know nothing about Taiwan to testify for him. To say, judge, look at the, look look what's down there. This man has been consistent. This man has paid his bills. This man has done everything that the courts have told him to do consistently, not hit and miss. The judge look and say, man, this man is prepared. This man has has everything together. This man's conduct is consistent. This man do not give up. This man goes to work. This man does whatever he has to do to make it. Man, I got to do something for this man. Because he waited on God. You get everything ready. 
He had everything ready. With his life, he had everything ready. So everything matched up. So what could the judge say? But let God have his way. We know God touched his heart. God blessed him to see, and what he couldn't see, but God brought it to his attention. What are you believing God for? He was believing God to pay off this debt. So what are you believing God for? Whatever you believe in God for, stand on that and per, go to pursue it. Now, in pursuing it, you do it God's way. The Lord really worked with me with that pursuing, because we can pursue something and don't pursue it the right way. Pursue it according to how God say pursue it. I want a husband. I want a wife. I want a house. I want a car. Pursue it the way God in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Do what he's telling you to do, not what you want to do, because every man is right in his own eyes. So pursue it, but do it according to God's word. And then 1 John 5, 14 through 15 says, and having this confidence that if we, uh, and this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, uh-oh, whatever you ask, ask it according to God's will. Make sure it's lined up with the word of God and then keep the word of God in the context that is given. Because if you don't use it in the right context, when God's word says, God's word says, well, it said it, but are you using it in the right context? So make sure of that. So make sure that it's according to his will and then know that he hears us. And if you know that he hears you, whatsoever you ask, you know that we have our petition, whatever your petitions are, you already have them. He already hear you. You just waiting for the manifestation that we desire him, he will do. And we have the assurance of God's word that God's timing is always perfect. Please remember, God's timing is always perfect. Sister Echo, there's some things you have asked God to do in your life, and God is doing those things. God is bringing those things to pass. He's, he's showing you how to prepare yourself, whatever it is. He's showing you what to do, whatever it is. All you have to do is continue to do what God said do, and then one day it will unfold and the blessing will be there that you have asked God for. Amen? Whatever it may be. Sister Eccles, be not weary in well-doing. I don't know why I'm speaking to you today, but God knows. Be not weary in well-doing. Be not weary in well-doing, for in due time, in due season, I want you to, you may already be saying it, but if you're not saying it, start saying, in due time, Lord, at your appointed time, I'm going to receive my blessing. At the appointed time, I'm going to receive my blessing. You understand my first? At the appointed time, you're going to receive your blessing. Not your time, but God's time. God's reign comes at the appointed time. And when God's reign comes, Things that are dead come to life. Things that are dry come to life. I was watching the rain on yesterday, and I can water my grass, Brother Scotty, I can water my grass and water my grass and water my grass and water my grass, and it helps. But when God's rain, hallelujah, when God's rain, I don't know, nature knows God's rain. You can water day and night, but when God's rain, those flowers, my flowers are just standing up at, at attention. Hallelujah. My grass is just green and beautiful. God, I've been watering it too, but I don't get the same results. But when God reigns, when God gives, when God do, in due time, if you just wait on the rain, the old saints will say, send the rain, 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 send the rain. We be looking around as young and saying, what are they talking about? The latter rain, the latter rain, the latter rain, the latter rain. The latter rain. The latter rain, the latter rain. We need your 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 rain. And then God would rain down on us, but we had to wait on him. We had to wait on him. And then when he rained down on us, we were refreshed. We were renewed. We were strengthened because God has sent the rain. So be not weary in well-doing. For in due season, we shall reap if we faint not. God bless you, God keeps you, keep you, God strengthen you, I'm encouraged, and I want you to be encouraged as you wait on the Lord, and I was speaking to Sister Echoes, 
but I'm speaking to whoever listened today. Whatever it is that you're asking God for, whatever it is you believe in God for, whatever it is that you're standing, believe in God. Keep on standing. You may be crying at this moment. You may be weeping. You may be hurt. You may be discouraged, whoever I'm talking to on the day. But the Bible said, be that I thought about it, it old. Be not weary and well doing, for in due season you shall reap if you faint not. And he also said, weeping may endure, uh oh, for a night. You may be crying now. You may be hurting now. You may be going through now. But joy, say joy, joy. comes in the morning. Come on, say joy, joy. comes in the morning. But you have to wait on God. And in waiting on God, you will find the power that you need. God, we just thank you for your many blessings. We thank you for your goodness and for your mercy and for your outstretched hand. Lord, we thank you because we're waiting on you to do what you said you would do. Lord, you said you would answer my prayers. You said not only my prayers, my petitions, and my, my petitions are my prayers. Oh, God, and sometimes there may be many. But, Lord, as I wait on you, you will show me the way. Oh, God, you will lead me. You will guide me. You will help me. You will strengthen me. Lord, you said in your word that you will increase my strength when I have no strength. Hallelujah. You said you will give me what I need. You said ask and it shall be given. You said seek and you shall find. And you said knock and the door shall be open unto me, oh, God. So, Lord, I receive all your promises. Lord, if I've done anything that I shouldn't have done, if i said anything that I shouldn't have said, if I've committed any sin, oh God, that I'm not aware of God and that, that I am aware of God, I ask today that you forgive me. I ask today that you wash me. I ask today that you cleanse me in the name of Jesus. And God, I thank you for it because you said if I asked, you said you would do it, God. So cleanse me, wash me, and make me whole in you. And Lord, I stand righteous in you. I stand clean in you. I stand pure in you. And I thank you for it. And, Lord, as I wait on you, I will find the power that I need, and I will walk in that power now to him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all I ask of thing, according to the power that worketh in me. In Jesus' name I pray. Thank God. Amen. God bless you. God keep you as you continue to wait on him. Amen.